uh, did bring up that he was working for the DEA and CIA going back for a decade. It was all sanctioned, and then it was a war to take out other cartels. That they were being double crossed. So that all came out. I, 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 now, if I'm going back from memory here, but specifically, what can you say about El Chapo flights into Mexico? I mean, I, I think on off record once and on record, you told me you know El Chapo, correct? I well, I know. <laughs> Yes, I okay. Carl Quintero also was another uh, person to send the mix in this, and uh, Carl Quintero uh, and uh, Joaquin Guzman uh, were associates at uh, Carl's Ranch uh, in um, uh, Guadalajara, outside Guadalajara. Um, Carl Quintero had a warrant issued for him because of the Kiki Camarena murder. I'm not going to go into all that kind of stuff because it takes up too much time. But the lineage is just there that uh, yes, Joaquin Guzman um, <clears throat> and his family. Uh, I've been privileged to, to meet him and talk to him, and um, I, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, DEA knows this. There's a whole complete file on this. Uh, we had undercover operatives working into that operation through the Mexican Army. I'm not, I'm not Mexican Army, through the Mexican Marinos. Uh, and that goes back to a Task Force 7 that was working out of Fort Bliss, Texas, uh, that was infiltrated into the arms deal about uh, what was going on and um, uh, guns going across the border. Uh, into Mexico at that particular time. Um, well, I don't want to get to rambling here, but my point being is that those allegations that uh, the cartel had U.S.-made weapons involved in an international gun-running operation that also included guns going to the Middle East, Libya, uh, three, four years ago, I think those allegations were made. And I made a, a comment that it was a similar operation that's been going on for a number of years, all the way back before Iran-Contra, going all the way back to Cuba. And uh, now it's important because we have the 50 Cal, that's Fox News, AP, but then no other coverage, uh, from the government to El Chapo. Uh, who's behind it? Obviously, uh, it, it's connected into the federal government. And why are they burning El Chapo now? Why are they turning on him? You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Joining us now is Robert X. Johnson, and he is someone who has a lot of experience at the grassroots level. And as you've heard me say many times before, I think we are too caught up with trying to fix things at the very top. I think we need to understand how to do things at the state level. We need to understand what our power is with state nullification. We need to understand what our power is with jury nullification. And we need to understand what we can do at the local grassroots level to affect electoral reform. So joining us now is Robert X. Johnson. He was a former state parliamentarian for the Republican Party uh, back in 1995. He was a delegate and activist from 1988 to 2010. He had a stroke in uh, 2011, and he backed out of the heavy activism. But he's back now to advise us on specifically what we can do at the local level and also to give us kind of a overview of uh, what we're really trying to do here. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. Give us an idea of uh, where you see this going. And as we talked a little bit before the interview, uh, the the bigger picture before we get into some details that people can do at a uh, at the local level. In my observations of politics generally, people like to look to the top only. They want this guy for president, that guy for president, or they look at what can we do with like constitutional conventions. And all of that is fine, but it'll never really work. It never seems to work. If you only cry out for a king or only look at the top, it seems that you're always betrayed just shortly thereafter. I mean, well, you know, I, I think the government has gotten so large, so intrusive, that I don't think any one person can even control it. We have so many different bureaucracies that are involved at local levels. And, of course, at the, at the federal level, I should say, that have basically become a law and a little kingdom to themselves. It's a, little it's a difficult violent, thing yeah. even for one individual to do that. And when we put all of our energy into just trying to get a guy elected for president, and if that's the only thing that we're concerned about, we don't pay any attention to what's happening at the local level where we can have far more leverage, that is a, a failed strategy, a failed tactic. And that's kind of why I agreed to come in today is because the strategy of bottom-up is truly essential even if your desire is top-down. Yeah. A top-down strategy really won't bring any fruit until you have a bottom-up strategy to go with it. Well, we've had the left always say, think globally, act locally. And I think we need to understand what's going on globally. We need to understand what's going on nationally. But we understand that where the rubber meets the road, where you really need to take action, if you're going to change things, is at the local level. That's exactly right. A lot of people just don't realize it because it seems like it's picky or too small. Mm -hmm. But a precinct convention is actually more powerful than Congress and the Senate and the president. Because the fourth clause of the First Amendment, you got freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press— most people don't realize the fourth one, freedom of assembly, that is political parties. And the rules of a – that's what I'm an expert in is rules. The rules of a political party are dominant over state law when appropriate, 
over state constitutions and even federal law because those rules are literally freedom of assembly. The Fong case in 1988 and again another case in 2000, the Supreme Court made the ruling clearly a political party is independent of the state's authority to control it. How can you have freedom of assembly if the state or the federal government is controlling it? So we take their money in political parties so they get some control, but the state has the burden of proving overriding state interest to monkey around. One example is, for example, we could pass at a party rule level with one or two percent of the population or voting population a rule on term limits, and we could term limit out all incumbents they couldn't run in the primary. That way, because of gerrymandering, you're pretty much going to wipe out all the Republicans, or if you took over their Democrat Party, all the Democrats. Abraham Lincoln was term limited out of office from the Whig Party after one term in Congress because that's what the Whig Party party rules said. Yeah. There was no law that required yeah. him to leave. You don't have to go through this entire, this complicated <clears throat> amendment to the Constitution <clears throat> or a uh, constitutional convention. You can just do it at the party level. Say, we're going to have term limits. That's it. And for like the rhino problem, you could pass a rule at a state convention that creates censure, which means punishment. You know, you're a bad guy. I think you're a rhino. You're against the ideals of our platform. You are now prohibited from running in our party. That's it. They're out of office. They're done. Mm -hmm. It eliminates the rhino problem. So this gives you the opportunity with very small numbers to take over the Congress, the Senate, the State House, the State Senate, the governorships. Party rules can bring discipline to party platforms. Right now, a party platform is a meaningless document. Nobody reads it. Nobody cares. That's right. But just 50 years ago, the first thing you did was say, I agree to support the platform. Therefore, I'm eligible to run. There is no system of rules or design of politics that is safe from the conniving activity of liars, cheaters, and stealers. The Bull Moose Party at back then, everything was machine run. And so they changed the rules to make it primary run. But now primaries are controlled by money and gerrymandering and all kinds of avarice. So you just keep changing things. In the Declaration of Independence, it tells you the purpose of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to secure governments for our people. But it is the right, it is the duty of the people to change the forms, the rules, so they may secure. And then at the end of the last sentence of the Declaration of Independence basically says, to this cause we pledge our lives, our honor, our sacred, our prosperity, all of everything. Mm -hmm. That's what's missing today. Bottom up, you have to realize the lowest boring level of a precinct convention, you go to a senatorial convention and you fight to become a state delegate. And if we have I would think about 65% of the delegates, we can pretty much change the world in as little as two to one to two I elections. I absolutely ago. agree with you. I, I've been involved, <clears throat> not with the Republican Party, but I've been involved with the Libertarian Party back in North Carolina in 1992. Uh, we had a, a very vibrant party that one year. We had a larger state convention than the Republican Party did. And I've gone through, I've covered many events, uh, both as a videographer and as a reporter, also as a participant. I know just how difficult it is to get people to show up to a political process. Very few people show up. I, go, I remember going to uh, uh, a, 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 a political activity where there was nobody there but uh, the candidates, a couple of their representatives, and that was basically it. Nobody from the public showed up. So it is very uh, it is a very powerful tool that is just laying there, I think, like jury notification, that if people understood what was there, if they had the knowledge, because they don't have the knowledge, our people perish, right? Exactly. If they understood the power that is just laying there on the table. So people people don't... A small number of people, they could come in and they could take over this convention and they could actually restore integrity to the process. As you pointed out, they could institute things like term limits, uh, censure to get rid of people who uh, violate the principles that are in the party platform. We fought in the Libertarian Party over every little word in this complicated platform. I mean, that was a long process. And then the guys would, you know, agree to that. If they didn't agree to it, they were out. I mean, we had, you want to talk about a, uh, a convention that is, uh, what they're talking about with the Republican convention, the old style convention we used to have back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, I, I saw that. I was a part of that process. I know that when it is small like that and you've got activists involved, that can happen. It still can happen. Yes, yeah, so people don't like to waste their time. So 
the strategists that we have on the national scene today keep talking top down. They only talk about grandiose ideas. If everybody follows me, we can save the world. Well, you know what? Basically, they're right. If everybody would follow 